Yeah, I came down to 89 here, so uh, I'm not getting any sidebanders in there right now. I've got the 6, uh, six kilohertz uh, pass band in. Boy, I like this receiver, though. I have the, uh, the high boost on the receive side, and boy, it brings out the, uh, the highs in your voice and the mid-range. I mean, it really sounds good here on this big uh, 6x9 uh, speaker. So, uh, real good there. Yeah, I like to experiment with those uh, different elements. I have some 3-wire elements and 2-wire uh, elements there. The 2-wire is supposed to be a high-fidelity type uh, for singing and uh, music and so forth. And, uh, of course, you could probably do voice like Ronald Coleman or somebody. <laughs> I'd like to sound like Ronald Coleman, by the way. <laughs> I have some of his talking records. Uh, they call them talking books. I don't know if you've ever uh, listened to any of those, like uh, the complete works of uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson and uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes and uh, uh, all of the sonnets of uh, William Shakespeare, 154 sonnets by Ronald Coleman, and uh, of course, uh, I think Basil Rathbone does uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes, and uh, I like to listen to different voices there, and try to remember voices too, I'm uh, quite a voice uh, enthusiast there. <laughs> you have a very good voice on the radio too, uh, Paul, so uh, that's good there. Uh, WA3 VJB and 8YHP. Very good, David. And 8YHP. Anstead, West Virginia. WA3 VJB. Well, I did radio news for many years before crossing over to television news gathering. So it, it kind of comes naturally to be able to speak into a microphone used to deliver newscasts at the top of the hour for one of the radio networks. And diction and pronunciation and how to avoid popping your pee is stuff that you learned along the way. But thank you for the compliment. It's uh, nice to uh, have that noticed as a faculty. I got my voice from my dad, who retired as an executive of and he had this authoritative voice, far more uh, convincing than my own. And in his early days, he was a bill collector before he became a management figure. And you can imagine a voice with more power than mine calling you on the phone wondering why your payment hasn't come in. <laughs> and, uh, my uh, my friends used to kid. They'd call the house looking for me, you know, in elementary school and, and high school, and my dad would answer the phone. <laughs> and it would scare the kid. And, you know, it's like, uh, is, is, is Paul there? Uh, it's not too much trouble. <laughs> and that was just the way my dad was, you know. So if anything, I, I got some of that from him, David, and I'm, I'm happy to relate the experience to you here as to where that comes from. If um, your email is good on QRZ.com, or if you wanted to give me an email address, I have a short recording of you here on this microphone with the processor turned on. And I can pause it for a second if you wanted to change back to the D104. Matter of fact, let me do that right now. 3VJB, go ahead. <laughs> Real good there, Paul. Yeah, I'm back on the D104. and. Uh yeah, oh, uh, I guess you remember uh, uh, the Huntley-Brinkley report and uh, Howard K. Smith and all of them, Walter Cronkite. Yeah, there's a lot of different voices. Uh, Alexander Scorby, and uh, he would scare the students there. <laughs> His voice, very authoritative there. So, how's this one doing? Uh, WA3VJB and 8YHP. Yeah, that'll give a good demonstration of the two uh, two differences there, David. I think that'll be uh, good. Let me shut that one off. Okay, I heard the station on the side there. Uh, we'll bring you in there. Yeah, WA 
three BJB and eight YHP. Real good there, Paul. Yeah, there's some YouTubes now you can listen to. Uh, Gene Shepard uh, from WOR. He was a personality there that told stories, and some of them were ham stories about uh, amateur radio. You might be interested in that. And he's on YouTube. He's a silent key, and uh, also uh, Ken Nordine. Uh, Ken Nordine uh, was a personality at uh, WGN, and uh, he has a lot of YouTube uh, stories and things that he tells, and he was really into audio. I don't know how much equipment he had, but uh, you would probably appreciate listening to uh, Ken Nordine. And uh, also, uh, let me see, there was another one uh, out in... Uh, of course, uh, Dick Biondi, you've probably heard him. <laughs> he might be a, before your time, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, there's. A, I like to listen to uh, impersonations, too, like Frank Gorsha. He's real good. Frank Gorsha and uh, uh, some of the other ones there that do the impersonations. I like to hear them. So let's see who the breaker is there. Uh, this is N8YHP here, David, and uh, go on that, go ahead there. Yeah, very good. Uh, you know, I'm uh, 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 and uh, Paul Kangas and a uh, host of people from CNBC, and a lot of them did have really unique voices, especially Paul Kangas. He just had such a great voice and he's no longer with us. He also, uh, by the way, is a ham, so we uh, got to be really good friends and would talk on the air from time to time. But anyway, um, point is, <laughs> I don't have a lot to add to this conversation um, and I just totally enjoy it. Okay, so I just want to come in and let you know how much I was enjoying it. So I will pass it over to uh, WA3BJB, I believe it is. Um, this is KA6NNR, name is Gene, and located uh, just outside of Philadelphia. Okay, Gene, very good. KA6NNR. I think you're on 7290. Had to retune a little bit there. With N8YHP in West Virginia, this is Annapolis Radio, WA3VJB, making a transmission. Yeah, very good. Well, it's nice to be among those who appreciate the voices from the past. I, I find younger people especially, as it, you heard me telling David, don't seem to have the affinity to pick up their news from the radio anymore. Um, they pick it up online and perhaps they watch on TV, but the idea of listening to a story on the radio with a sound bite that actually portrays the story and the newsmaker's own words is something that was near and dear to me when I started out 40 years ago. And I, I miss it. I mean, I saw the handwriting on the wall that radio was not going to be a viable career path, and I crossed into television news gathering and finished out uh, the next 30 years of my career there. And that's been very rewarding because, A, it's got more money behind it, and... Uh, B, there's a lot more opportunity to do things that radio would not support. Uh, travel, for example, and covered a G7 summit in France for Dow Jones Television. And, you know, that sort of thing. What radio station would pay for me to go to France and cover a G7 summit, you know? <laughs> so I, I called it right, I, I think. And I, I've heard the names that you've mentioned, but uh, I, I think kind of being in the business downplays my interest in listening to the radio. <laughs> and, uh, I would have missed some of those uh, programs. Of course, Gene Shepard I've heard of. Uh, Warren, NY2H, Warren Ziegler, actually got Gene's call letters, K2ORS, and Warren's a prominent AM, or usually on 80 meters. Years ago, we had a series of social events among AMers called the Rolling Rock event. I think we got up to eight or nine of them. We would call them Rolly Rock Nine and so on. And Warren came to one of them here at the house. And I did my first and only 160-meter talk-in 
with Warren Mobile with a halo antenna and a great big loading coil driving in. And that was uh, now K2ORS, Gene Shepard's old calls. So it's funny you should mention him. But yeah, there, there are a number of them. Um, David French was a CNN anchor for many years, and for KET. He went on as a spokesperson for the CIA. Now, I always wondered, you know, how much do you have to do um, being a spokesperson for the CIA? Let me you know, think about that for a minute. They, they never say anything about anything. So, and you're a spokesperson? So he would kind of smile and, you know, I think the implication was that it was a good government job and he was going to ride it out. But that was in 4 KET. So, Gene, not bad signal, by the way, from Philadelphia into Annapolis, capital of Maryland. I was listening to David on one of the SDR, uh, Kiwi, S no, uh, yeah, Kiwi SDR nodes. It's in North Carolina. So he was about 20 over 9 at that point trying to make a bit of an audio recording of him to demonstrate the difference between his two microphones. That's what we were discussing, if you've been listening. And David, I've got that. You might confirm for me your email address, and I'll send those off here after we're done. And uh, Gene, your, your audio sounds uh, mellow as well. Now, yours doesn't have as much high end as Gene's, uh, as David's. Uh, it doesn't have that s sizzle. And there was a thing when learning how to pronounce words on the radio, if someone could see you smile, they're actually seeing your teeth and the sibilant sounds are coming through. And that was a way of uh, emphasizing your clarity when you were speaking. NHYHP at Anstead, West Virginia. At the top of the hour, this is WA3VJB Annapolis. Go ahead, David. Okay, real good there, Paul. Yeah. Uh, WA3VJB a six N N R N A Y H P. Yeah, you would enjoy a Ken Nordine. He has uh, something called Word Jazz, Word Jazz, and uh, he's on YouTube there, and he does all kinds of audio uh, experiments and uh, uh, different uh, things there. But uh, real good. Yeah, I'm getting some noise under uh, Gene's uh, signal. But he's still coming through, so uh, real good there. This time of day, uh, it's, it's not very good propagation up that way. But uh, Gene, you are sounding pretty good when you do come up your signal there. So, uh, yeah, that uh, Art Bell, his call was uh, W6OBB, I think. He's a silent key, and uh, now sometimes he reminds you of uh, David Brinkley. <laughs> when he uh, gets to talk in there. I think he liked uh, David Brinkley and uh, Chet uh, Huntley, Huntley. So, uh, yeah, that's a lot to uh, to listen to all those uh, personalities on the radio over the years. And uh, there's been a lot of them in there. So up to you, Gene, uh, KA6NNR with uh, Paul on the side there and 8YHP. Okay, very good, Dave um, and Paul. Uh, thank you uh, very much for uh, letting me come into the uh, CUSO. I am running a, a pretty modern rig here. It's a Kenwood 990, and um, I just bought it from a gentleman uh, not too long ago. I'm not at all familiar with it. So um, I was really just uh, turning on today with the intention of tuning around and listening. But then I started to listen to the cue, so I thought, I really need to just break in here and <laughs> say hello and just let you know how much I was enjoying it. So I'm sure that there are some equalizers and so on that can probably work up a little bit and bring up the highs. It does have a little bit of, a, of an audio band scope uh, on it, and I can see where I'm really um, pretty much um, on the lower end, and I think that really is a problem with my voice, so uh, to Paul's point, I probably need to uh, show my teeth a little bit more and speak a little bit more clearly and maybe a little bit further away from the mic, but um, again, I'm kind of new at this one. I kind of cut my teeth with AM many, many years ago, got licensed around 1980, and I 
started by buying a uh, Kenwood 830 and enjoyed that for a little while, but then I started to hear these AMers up on 29.001 in the LA Basin. And once I heard them, I was absolutely hooked. So I went to, you know, some of the local slot meets and picked up, you know, old Johnson gear and some collar and stuff and all that, which I still have to this day, but I, I really need to get that stuff out of mothballs and put it back up here on the bench. Well, probably do a little bit of uh, <laughs> upgrading here with the electrolytics and so on and uh, get it on. But um, I do appreciate the nice report, so thank you very much for that. But I won't... Uh, I won't uh, and just to use this, I'll try to get that old equipment on one of these days. Life is kind of hectic, I'm sure, for, for you both as well. So, Paul, I'll pass it over to you. And both your signals are, are very strong. I didn't really look at the S-meter, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, the armchair, beautiful armchair. And both of you have just wonderful uh, audio. So, uh, it's a pleasure to have to listen to content. W A three uh V eight B J B um with um oh it happens in my notes here. I'm sorry. Someone was gonna do it. N N eight Y H P from W A three V J B. And it took a little bit of a fade there right at the end. And I may have, uh... oh, wait a minute. Am I doubling with you? Hang on. Yeah, he just cleared there, Paul. Yeah, I see. That's one of the advantages of using the SDR is that you see the other carrier that's still in there. Uh, sorry I stepped on your tongue there, Gene. <laughs> I, uh, I keyed up on top of you before you were finished, but it sounded like you were turning it over and... If I missed anything, you can repeat it, but I'm glad you checked in, and I'm glad you're enjoying the conversation that we're having here between David and myself and your contributions as well. Solid copy on most of that. Uh, the roller coaster that is band propagation right now brought you to about 10 to 15 over 9, and then down in the trough right when I thought you had turned it over. But I got that you were licensed back in the 1980s in the Los Angeles area, and that you've picked up a couple of pieces of Johnson gear after hearing some of the West Coast AMers, yes. Uh, one of the wonderful advantages of using the Kiwi SDR constellation of internet receiver nodes is that I can finally hear all those guys in the Pacific time zone. I've tried for, oh, I don't know how many winters to break in on 3870. And of course, you know, they're all 15 and 20 over 9. They're not going to hear me at S5 or S7 from the East Coast. But I've, I've wanted to check in to say hello. Um, a number of people, I've got their calls written down over the years that I, I've always wanted to say hello to, are on 3870 in the wintertime in particular. I, I can hear them then. And the SDR nodes have now enabled me to listen to Western-based nodes where they're just as strong as I've heard recordings of them in the past. So yeah, no wonder that influenced you to get into this part of the hobby gene. The Kenwood's doing fine. I, I agree with you that it's worth your while to get into the menus for the equalization settings. You are correct about the low end emphasis right now, and I think if same advice I gave to David, if he if you also were to de emphasize the low end response, it would balance out the proportion of mid range and upper mid range that's available to you on the nine ninety. I don't think that's got a very generous pass band on AM transmit, so even greater for your labor might be to get the Johnson back on the air and, you know, get up on the air in style on vintage transmitter of some kind. But nonetheless, you've checked in fine, uh, and this is only a, an academic discussion that I point that out to you. And I'll say the same thing that I said to David since I've been making recordings along the way here. Although you've probably heard what that rig sounds like, you can hear it in comparison to David's. So that when you uh, check in, if anybody were to make a comment, you'll know exactly what they're talking about, about the uh, the low-end response and the occluded highs, if that's the case. I'm going to start heading for the door. David, why don't you uh, carry on with Gene, if you wish, or uh, wrap it up? 
I thought I heard somebody check in underneath. Uh, one of us, since you and I are on 89 and Gene is on 90, I'm not sure which one they were zeroed to, but as I listened on the SDR, I did hear somebody check in, so you may have someone joining. And yes, very good on the list of names, the who's who's of radio, times past. I don't know if that's coming back or not, but as you point out, a lot of it exists online as a recording. Fortunate for us that we can still relive those experiences of times past. David, good talking with you. Gene, thanks for checking in. I'll look for you again here on 40 meters. Nice uh, amount of elbow room and good signals all the way around as well. N8YHP, Anstead, West Virginia, the southern part of the state with uh, Gene, KA6NNR on the side in the Philadelphia area. This is the Chesapeake Bay region of Maryland, WA3VJB. Go ahead, David. Okay, Paul, real good. WA3VJB with uh, KA6NNR, N8YHP. Yeah, that uh, these modern stations now, they use a lot of compression. Uh, these digital stations, uh, uh, ubiquity, you know, they use the digital format and they have a, a lot of compression. Some of them have 25 dB of speech compression. And these uh, broadcasts for football and uh, the sports announcers, I like to listen to uh, the uh, some of the sports announcers that have the side chain. Uh, when they, they have an outside mic going to the uh, audience out in the bleachers, and then when they talk, it goes down so many dB. Winchester 1 at Frontier.com if you want to send that. And thanks a lot for being here. Eight one HP 73. Okay, very good, Dave. N-H-Y-N-H-Y-H-P with W-E-B-J-B signing. Paul, was a pleasure. Uh, this is KA6 NNR. Uh, thanks so much again. Um, thank you for acknowledging me. I mean, a few so, but it's a great conversation. And that's the thing I've always liked about AM is just sit back and enjoy and a good conversation. I think I've learned more uh, on uh, AM than I have throughout my time as a ham on sideband in terms of technical features and, and so on. So it's really been a great learning experience, not just technically, but obviously in, in a forum like this where, where we both are talking about uh, broadcasting in the past. Yeah, I mean, to, to, to uh, talk about Gene Shepard, I mean, I could talk about him for hours. I read all his books and um, just loved this one movie that he did that was called Phantom of the Open Heart. And it was a workshop series uh, that was done on public uh, public TV. It must have been back in the late 70s. And it took me so long to find a copy of that. But I finally did. In fact, I think I ultimately found it on uh, YouTube, too. I mean, I, I found a, a pretty poorly recorded DVD, which must have been taken right off the air back in the late 70s. You can imagine how ghostly that was. But then... I think I did uh, find it later on uh, a copy on, on YouTube. So if you happen to be a Gene Shepard fan, uh, Phantom of the Open Hearth was an absolute classic. And it's really uh, where uh, a lot of the content for Christmas Story came from. So a very, very amazing, talented uh, person. I just can't say enough about him, but kind of relive my childhood when we talk about it. So, so glad that I had enough signal to get um, out to both of you. And um, oh, you both were pretty solid. I didn't get too much USB at all. Uh, both of you were right in that S8 to uh, 5 or 10 over. Uh, right throughout. Uh, you never get down at all. So I guess um, this things here in the Philly area were pretty optimal for the for the band. Dave, have a great afternoon, and I sure hope that we can do this again uh, sometime. I'd really enjoy it. And uh, I think that uh, Paul said that he was going to send you uh, a recording, and I think he's done a recording of me as well. So let me just 
give my email real quickly, and if you don't mind forwarding that, uh, I'd love to hear the comparison. So uh, the email is um, P, as in Paul, N, Nancy, F, Frank, and then F, L, Y, at AOL. That'd be really cool to be able to listen to that too. Take care, Dave. And again, really enjoyed it. I'll look out for you again sometime. Hopefully, it won't be too long before we can strike another few times. See you next. And then on, it's clear.